This video is supported by Blinkist. This is straight black coffee. This is what I think of straight black coffee, and this is a device that uses black coffee, plus a bit of gravity, to create some pretty impressive static charges. In fact, it's capable of producing thousands of volts. If you haven't heard of it, there's a type of generator which uses falling water to create a high voltage charge. It's brilliant. It's basically the world's easiest DIY high voltage power supply. The Lord Kelvin's generator. Considering dams use water and height to produce electricity as well is not that crazy of an idea, nor is it new. Take into account the fact that coffee's mostly water and well, now we're getting somewhere. In fact, water is full of electric charges and you're about to see exactly how easy it is to extract those charges. Let's get to it. Before we begin, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you never miss new videos. Now technically, water is electrically neutral. It's like Switzerland. Uh, molecularly, it does contain positive and negative charges. They just kind of float around in equal concentrations. Lord Kelvin generators hijack that balance and use separate streams of water to separate the electric charges into separate capacitors. They're totally brilliant and stupidly simple to build. That's the electrical minimum. Screens are a plus and that was just used to reduce splashing. Now, while pouring water is absolutely exhilarating, I don't want to have to do it all day. So the metal components are built into an acrylic frame that supports the power source up top, which is about a liter or a liter and a half of water. Or terrible coffee. Technically, the power source is gravitational potential energy, which is why we need that water to be at a height. But who's counting? At the base sits two metal cups acting as capacitors, and their rounded handles function as the perfect spark gap. Above those is a sliding mechanism used to move metal rings up and down for adjustments during operation. The mechanism holds a matching pair of rings, and conductive tubing is magnetically attached to each pair. The other end of this tubing attaches to an opposing base, also magnetically. From top down, rings of needles allow water to drain from both sides of the reservoir. The streams fall down and pass through the metal rings without making any contact, falling into their respective metal cups. With everything hooked up properly, the water starts behaving pretty strangely, accompanied by a spark. The water streams reset and then slowly begin bending outward again, followed by another spark. This happens to both streams of water at the same time, driving some pretty impressive voltages. Essentially, when the water begins to fan outward, it's an indication that voltage is beginning to build. As science goes, it didn't actually work the first time. It took a lot of adjustments, and when I finally got it down, uh, I got pretty excited. Most of the tweaks revolved around finding the right height, but it still took me like a solid hour, and then this happened. Look, that's the craziest thing. Oh my God. Now the more observant of you might have noticed that I added a little bit of acrylic to the build. And even though our marriage is going nicely, uh, acrylic can be a little annoying to work with at times. You know, when you're gluing a joint, it can take upwards of an hour to cure. And I'm not just gonna sit there and watch the thing cure. So I like to fill that time with podcasts and audiobooks. And the app I tend to use for these is Blinkist. It can be downloaded on your phone and there's thousands of book and podcast titles available, from adventure to business and even science, which of course is my favorite. Each one is summarized into what's called Blinks so that you can enjoy the topic in a condensed form. I just finished listening to Seven Brief Lessons on Physics by Carlo Rovelli. Super interesting book that talks about the history of physics and basically how we've arrived at quantum mechanics. And that's something I've been trying to learn more about. Uh, my favorite part so far is a chapter that relates heat to time and argues that the two of them are intertwined. Totally solid book. I recommend it. Right now, Blinkist is offering a pretty sweet deal where the first 100 people that go to Blinkist.com slash Plasma Channel will get unlimited access for a week plus 25% off of an actual membership. And you can cancel that free trial week at any time. It's a really cool tool for people like me that don't have a lot of free time. Okay, I really want to talk about that orbiting water because it's the coolest thing about this whole generator. During operation, the water fans out for a reason. In fact, it's an indication that things are working correctly. 
When water passes through both sets of charged rings, their electric fields begin to polarize the exiting water to the opposite charge of the ring it just fell through. So if the ring on the right is negative, the water exiting is positive and attracted. If the ring on the left is positive, then the exiting water is negative and also attracted. The higher the voltage, the more the attractive force. But how does this separation of charge build up in the first place? Even though water has no overall electric charge, it's full of movable electric charges. However, all it takes is one ion to cause a charge imbalance. So if you split a water source into two separate streams, it's inevitable that one of them will be insignificantly more positively charged and the other one will be insignificantly more negatively charged or, or vice versa. That insignificant charge imbalance would normally level itself out once the two streams recombine at the bottom. But you'll notice they're not getting a chance to recombine. So that's where the brilliant design comes into play. Okay, say the left stream has a few more negative ions in it. When that stream hits the collector, the collector now has a negative charge. But the right set of rings is electrically attached to the left collector, so it also experiences a slight negative charge. That repels electrons in the stream, pushing them up into the reservoir. This leaves the water with a positive charge, and when it hits the collector, it also has a positive charge. However, the left ring is electrically attached to the right collector, so it also experiences a slight positive charge, and that pulls electrons down from the reservoir. So this water stream is more negative and that deposits more negative charges in that original collector. That makes this more negative, more positive, more positive, more negative. It, it just keeps going and going and going and building. And you can visually see this accumulation of charge as the water deflects outward, resetting with every spark. It's a literal cascading effect that starts with just a few stray charges through completely random chance. And it actually seems to work better using black coffee. So, hey, at least that's good for something. So far, I've created a water-based Marx generator consisting of water capacitors and water resistors. I've done a video detailing real-world applications of using water pipes as a method for directional wireless power transmission, and now it's clear that water itself can be used to create high voltage. I think it's time I combine all those. If that sounds like your thing, then consider subscribing. Let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments section down below, or if you have any video requests. Please also consider supporting my work through Patreon. You'll get some special perks. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time, you classy cats.